Good evening. Before we get into the intro tonight and get into this update, we have three major things that we have to cover in this update. And not and this doesn't even include the fact that Bitcoin hit a fresh 2022 low today. So for all the people that told you that we were at the bottom, yada yada yada, they're obviously proven to be full of shit as usual. But a major thing that came out today, JP Morgan Chase. Crypto wallet trademark is approved. So the bank's new brand can be applied to virtual currency services and more. So to me, in such an uncertain time, I'm going to be very interested to see what's going on here. As you guys know, I've made no bones about it. I did my home mortgage through JP Morgan because I know he's gonna, they're going to be around as a whole. Um, and just there's, there's just a few other reasons. Like JP Morgan controls a lot of things, that name, the branding. Um... And this is very interesting when it comes to this space, because obviously, you know, this is going to be a main player in the years to come. So here's a possible exchange coming up out of nowhere, you know, or a wallet, I should say. Then this is just coming in. So we're going to have to see what's going on here. Hash Flare founders arrested an astounding 575 million crypto fraud scheme. So this is just something breaking a little bit here. And then Genesis, this is something I've been warning everybody about. We've got to dive into Genesis here a little bit before we get into the XRP charts. But Genesis is denying imminent plans to file for bankruptcy. But at the same time, they've asked for help from uh, Binance and Apollo for cash. Or they say that they would have to shut down um, withdrawals imminently. They're not saying that they're going to have a... <laughs> bankruptcy or file for bankruptcy but they said without help they're gonna have no way of being able to basically stay open so let's do the central but there is a lot and i mean a lot going on tonight in crypto Good evening, 10.43 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on this Monday, November 21st, 2022. I'm XRP Future Millionaire, and I reside in the great state of Michigan. Um, so as we can see, XRP is sitting below 36 cents at 35.77, below a major pivot level on this uh, pattern because we need to get back above around the 367 level. And it becomes very obvious why if I give you the right XRP chart, let's see, right here, we need to break back over the bear flag. If you don't want this to be bearish, I personally, uh, I'm just fine with this doing what it's got to do here. So let me move this over here so it's easier to see. Actually, I don't even know where it's easier to see because it's all in my way because it's all in front of the numbers. Ah, good enough. So I would really like to see Bitcoin. I mean, uh, XRP break back over 367. It tried to briefly and got rejected. But if you're looking for it to become somewhat, you know, in the immediate short term, because this is very bearish. In the weekly, we're bearish, so forget about it. But in the immediate short term, if you're looking for some kind of narrative where this might go up a little bit, we need to break the 367 and get on top of the 200 here. But break out of the 367, which is this bear flag. And if we can break out of the bear flag, well, obviously, yeah, then you might be able to come up. And maybe, just maybe, come up here in a miracle run and retest the broken bull flag. But that's a long ways away, and that's asking an awfully lot out of this market. Um, also, we have... Yeah, I mean, that that's, that's the gist right there. That is the gist, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we have to deal with. So... We either get over that or we continue to break down. And what I'm waiting for is hopefully this head and shoulders as it's revealing itself now. Hopefully this breaks down. And then we can contend with the 287, which is XRP's 2022 low. Bitcoin made a fresh 2022 low today. And once again, it puts the egg on the face of all these YouTube influencers that keep saying that X or, uh, Bitcoin's at its all-time low here. 
or at least for the bear market lows, and we've hit a bottom. Now we've hit two fresh bottoms, two fresh lows here this week. The question remains, when will XRP do the same? That's my question that I have. Do you see? I ask each and every one of you. I know it's late here and getting late, but, you know, I stay up all hours of the night. I'm not going to bed till like, 2 a.m. So... I like to watch the market. I like to see what's going on. So this is a major developing story with, you know, XRP um, trying to get back out of this bear flag, but how it's gotten rejected here in the last couple three-hour candles, it's been spectacular to see. I want to see a major breakdown, and I would, you know, I just don't want to see this have to break back out of here. A rejection here would be fantastic because then we can come back down here and retest the 339 level and see if we can get down to the 287 quicker. This looks like a head and shoulders pattern here. Hopefully, it can continue to do this, and it can break down a little bit farther. You can even say an M is forming here on the bear flag, which if it pulls down would be beautiful. It would get us down to the 287 and lower. Um, but we have to get, always contend with the 287 until it breaks. Now, a couple of things I wanted to touch base on here before I, um, you know, before I end this uh, update. So, Genesis... Pay attention to this. If you have money on Genesis, this is uh, this is something you really have to pay attention to. And this one came out 21 minutes ago from Al Jazeera. And I'd rather just use this as my point of reference because I trust it more than my U.S. headlines. Crypto lender Genesis denies bankruptcy plans after FTX collapse. Genesis comments come days after it halted customer withdrawals due to liquidity difficulties. Remember what I said when FTX did this? And when all these other ones always halt, get off. Once they halt your money one time, get off. Because there might be a second chance, so get off. Cryptocurrency lender Genesis has denied it is close to declaring bankruptcy days after halting withdrawals in response to the collapse of crypto exchange FTX. Genesis said on Monday it has no plans to file for bankruptcy in the immediate future and would seek to resolve the situation consensually. Oh, it's good. It's consensually. <laughs> we have no plans to file bankruptcy imminently, a spokesperson told Al Jazeera. In an email statement, our goal is to resolve the current situation consensually without the need for any bankruptcy filings. Genesis continues to have constructive conversations with creditors. Well... <sighs> I wouldn't trust this uh, Genesis one bit. I'd get my shit out of there. The only Genesis I trust is the Genesis with Phil Collins and the Genesis I used to play, Sonic, um, and uh, many other games like Battletoads. Ooh, I love Battletoads. But I don't trust this version of Genesis. Oh, no siree. No, siri. Two of the other two are just fine, but this version of Genesis, get your shit out of there. Let's see. Bloomberg News earlier reported that Genesis, which has offices in New York City, London, and Singapore, was having difficulty raising new cash for its lending unit, and had warned investors that could file for bankruptcy if it did not secure extra funding. Well, after having problems securing extra funding. And they said they would have to file for bankruptcy if they didn't secure extra funding. But they're having difficulty raising capital. I'll tell you, there's only one way for this to play out, folks. Don't wait too long. The report which cited people familiar with the matter said the crypto investment bank has spent the past several days trying to raise at least $1 billion in new capital. Good luck with that. <laughs> the report which cited people familiar with the matter said the crypto investment Bank has spent the past several days trying to raise at least $1 billion in new capital. Whew. Genesis saw investment from crypto exchange Binance, but the latter declined the suggestion due to conflict of interest concerns. The Wall Street Journal reported on Monday citing people familiar with the matter. <laughs> Do they have no shame? Genesis also approached private equity firm Apollo Global Management for funding, according to the Wall Street Journal report. Al Jazeera has contacted Apollo and Binance for comment. Genesis Global... Capital, one of the largest crypto lenders, last week suspended customer withdrawals due to what it said was a liquidity shortage prompted by a spike in withdrawal requests following the implosion of Sam Bankman-Fried's FTX. 
The collapse of FTX, the third largest crypto exchange earlier this month, stunned the crypto industry, prompting allegations of fraud and mismanagement as well as comparisons with the 2008 collapse of Lehman Brothers. So that's a juicy story right there. Then the hash flare founders, I don't know what's going to come of this, but this isn't going to look good either. With all this stuff going on, you really don't want to keep piling up shit like this. I mean, I love it. I love it. I'm liquidated. I fucking love it. Hashflare founders arrested an astounding $575 million crypto fraud scheme. The Hashflare founders have been charged for their alleged involvement in a crypto fraud and money laundering conspiracy. So we're not going to go through this whole thing, but what I wanted to read is the main point. The two founders of now defunct Bitcoin cloud miner Hashflare have been arrested in Estonia over their alleged involvement in a $575 million crypto fraud conspiracy. So this company was created in 2015. It's hash flare. It was cloud mining. So, and then here. According to a statement from the United States Department of Justice citing court document, the entire mining operation run by founders Sergei Patapenko and Ivan Turgan was part of a multifaceted scheme that defrauded hundreds of thousands of victims. The including victims, this included victims, or convincing victims to enter into fraudulent equipment rental contracts through hash flare and persuading other victims to invest a fake virtual currency bank called Pilobus Bank. The pair is also accused of conspiring to launder their criminal proceeds through 75 properties, six luxury vehicles, cryptocurrency wallets, and thousands of cryptocurrency ma mining machines. U.S. Attorney Nick Brown for the Western District of Washington called the size and scope of the alleged scheme truly astounding. These defendants capitalized on both the allure of cryptocurrency and the mystery surrounding cryptocurrency mining to commit an enormous Ponzi scheme, he said. The hash flare founders have been charged with conspiracy to commit wire fraud, 16 counts of wire fraud, and one count of conspiracy to commit money laundering using shell companies and fraudulent invoices and contracts and could face up to 20 years in prison if convicted. Two Estonian citizens arrested in 575 million cryptocurrency fraud and money laundering scheme. So that's what's going to be breaking here, and you're going to start hearing more about that. This was 32 minutes ago when I came on the air. Well, I mean, it happened a couple hours ago. And then this, this is the big story for me. Big story for me. J.P. Morgan Chase Crypto Wallet Trademark is approved. J.P. Morgan has registered a trademark for a digital wallet and related cryptocurrency processing services. The trademark does not exclusively apply to crypto, but can also be applied to other financial services. Currently, the company is using the trademark with a service that provides business subledgers. Banking giant J.P. Morgan Chase's application for a trademark for a digital wallet with crypto features has been awarded by the U.S. Patent Office after more than two years in application status. How convenient of timing is it right now? Almost makes you think that the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit is to delay it so that J.P. Morgan can get on track here. J.P.M. Trademark's wallet brand. J.P. Morgan has registered a digital wallet brand. According to a filing with the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, the bank filed a trademark for J.P. Morgan Wallet. In July 2020, the filing was finally approved on November 15th. Under the radar, too. The text of the trademark indicates that it can be applied to an online services, including cryptocurrency payment processing, the electronic transfer of virtual currency by an online community, and the exchange of virtual currencies. The trademark does not exclusively apply to crypto services. It can also be applied to other financial services, including virtual checking accounts, automated clearinghouse, ACH payments, e-check processing, and bill payments. So soon this is going to be on Chase.com. I mean, I've had a credit card through them since 2008. I did my home mortgage through them. It's one of the hardest ones to get approved through. But I know they're going to be around, and as long as I have my shit through them, I don't got to worry about all the bullshit. And... It's one of those things you can't beat them, you join them. But if you join them, you better do your homework. Um, let's see. Currently, J.P. Morgan appears to be using the brand for a service that provides business subledgers. Through J.P. Morgan has not yet applied the trademark to a full-fledged crypto wallet. It has made several in inroads into the blockchain industry over the past several months. On November 2nd, the company performed an international currency swap using the Polygon blockchain. Oh, see, Ma Polygon Matic is getting bigger and bigger, especially with that Polygon ID. It now with ties to this, Matic's going to be a big player, like I've been saying for a while, too. So we got to keep our eye on Matic, especially as well in this time. Um, so 
So on November 2nd, the company performed an international currency swap using the Polygon blockchain. It performed the transactions with two Singapore-based banks, DBS Bank and SBI Digital Asset Holdings. Additionally, JP Morgan partnered with Visa on October 11th. That partnership aimed to integrate JP Morgan's blockchain product, Link, with Visa's business to bit oh boy, B2B Connect Network. It's going to be fucking huge. Also this year, JP Morgan carried out an on-chain transaction involving the settlement of BlackRock assets, opened a space in the blockchain-based virtual world Decentraland, and commented on Ethereum's recent merge. The banking giant continues to operate various cryptocurrency-related product lines, including its blockchain network Onyx, or Onyx and its private stablecoin, JPM Coin. Okay. Well, here's a stablecoin we're going to have to get behind, ladies and gentlemen. Now that this is announced, JPM Coin, I'm going to do my due diligence here. So, in the comments, if you're still watching this, put JPM Coin. I just want you to put JPM Coin in the comments so I know you're watching. And then let me know if you've done any research on this or if you think this is a big deal. This could be one of our CBDCs, one of the stable coins in the future, JBM coin, or JPM Coin. This is very important because they're starting their own wallet here, JP Morgan. And apparently it's been in the works for two years and they finally got approved to the U.S. Patent Office on November 15th. These developments, though not directly related to today's news, will put the bank in a strong position to expand its crypto services under its new wallet brand. And I also have JP Morgan trading app as well that I buy my options on. So we'll see what happens here. At the time of writing the author of this piece, own Bitcoin. Oh, what a poor son of a bitch. Bitcoin and Ethereum. So they're writing this and they're probably fucking shitting themselves. And Bitcoin had gotten in Ethereum. Ethereum didn't hit a new low today in 2022, but Bitcoin did. So if you want to trade like me, if you want to show me some support and... You want to join Tom's Army, you just would rather just show me some support. Hey, it's right. Um, it's easy. Go to my recent video or my recent videos, any of them. Click on more. And you can, first and foremost, if you're on Max C, you can buy XRP IOTA and many others of your ISO coins. It has HBART, it has Casper. One of our big issues with BitGuide is we couldn't buy um, certain ones in the futures, especially IOTA. Um... But the biggest reason why BitGuide, I don't have that on the top here, which I would, but in the USA, they made it more difficult for new users to register in the USA. It, sometimes it gives you the error, and understandably, you can still trade in the USA, but if you have to use a VPN to initially sign up, it's not worth it to me. So I still trade on BitGuide all the time. I got they're over $1,300 in the futures account for trading. I love the platform. I think it's simplistic, and it's actually my favorite to use user-wise. Um, but I have Maxi, which is a close second, which actually the user features are almost identical. So I could actually say it's 1A, 1B. But Maxi, I don't need a VPN. You can use it in the USA. But my most important thing, as Ryan Reynolds stares at me because he knows I'm right. I think that's Ryan Reynolds. It must be this Mint Mobile bullshit. Let's see. Let's at least get me credit. I know. I know. Oh, yeah, Mint Mobile. So, um... But you don't need a KYC, no VPN, and there's uh, no spot fees on here either. And you can trade up to 200, 200 X leverage without even doing any kind of verification on Mexi. And like, I'm looking for exchanges without spot fees. So both of these are great alternatives. And then if you want to send your XRP back to an exchange or you want to send money over to it, buy it over there and then send it over to Uphold. That's where I like to keep my stuff. Obviously, I'm looking into this new JP Morgan thing. But I'm also, you know, I've always keeping an active eye on other exchanges that are, I think, that are user-friendly. I'm working on another one um, that I'm personally investing in right now. Not investing, like buying their shares, but I'm personally putting money in there, testing out their futures. Because this one actually has staking for XRP, and I don't always endorse staking. But if you're going to hold it and you trust the exchange it's on and they offer staking, you know, that's something else to be on the lookout for now. I got to do a lot more testing before I even talk about this one, but it's definitely one to keep your eye out for. And I'm, my goal here is not to make a whole bunch of money off of advertising, but to at least do enough to where we have exchanges we can go to in a crunch and we know where we can go with no spot fees and ultimately where we trust the most with Uphold just because of what they have going forward in the future and where your liquid cash can obviously be. 
And then some people are like, well, what if I can't send my money out with XRP? We'll send it out through Tether. It might cost you a couple dollars or USDC or whatever. Send a stable coin and then you can send it to other exchanges. I guarantee it. So I appreciate the support. Would appreciate your support in Tom's Army. Hashtag the FUD stops here, period.